So anyway, so I am so excited for to hear from Nancy. I've got my notepad ready. She's going to deliver some amazing information. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the floor over. Nancy, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Robert. Appreciate being here. Thank you, Neil. So um, I picked this topic because actually I had to think about it. Uh, I was given, I was offered some other topics, like I could talk about door knocking or follow up, but I thought consistency, wow, that's, that's a vague topic, but let me give, give that some thought. And I think we all know that consistency is really, really important because if we do something for one day, it really doesn't matter. Or if we even do something for a week, we're not gonna see results. If we go to the gym one day, we're not gonna get more muscles. We're not gonna get stronger. We're not gonna become a better runner. It's gonna take a long time. Now, it might not be years. It might be three months and you'll see results. It might be 90 days and you'll see results, but consistency is something we don't just need in business, we need in life. Would you guys agree? Yes. Exactly. So all areas of life, I just mentioned physical. If we're going to work out, we can't just do it for a week and go, this sucks. It's terrible. I'm not going to do this anymore because it doesn't work. We have to do it daily or every other day. Same with relationships like our family members, our friends. Being consistent is almost the best thing we can do for them because it builds the relationship. Um, I'm going to share a story about back when I was in university, I had a great friend and um, we would carpool together and uh, I did this volunteer work once a week and for doing the, the volunteer work, I would get a chocolate milk at the end of my shift or a drink of my choice. And I said, you know, I don't really drink chocolate milk. And she said, I love chocolate milk. So I said, you know, why don't we do this? I'll do my volunteer shift and you can have my chocolate milk. So she always got it and she really appreciated it. So one day, like what happens with friendships is we had an argument, maybe on our carpool to work. We had an argument and we're mad at each other for some reason. Then I went to school and I did my volunteer shift and then I showed up and I gave her the chocolate milk. And that really surprised her. She was like, I didn't think you were gonna come today because we just had a fight. But I tend to do things like that. I don't really care what happens. It doesn't matter if we were fighting. It doesn't matter if somebody told me to get lost on my prospecting call or somebody told me to get off their lawn. When I was door knocking, I'm gonna knock the next door. It's really um, something that I feel strongly about that we gotta keep going regardless of what happens. So, um, you know, we can't let something get in the way of our consistency. So that's something I wanted to share. So we know that um, consistency is important. Um, Jim Rohn says, Consistent self-discipline is really what matters. Uh, it doesn't matter if you know a lot or you go to a lot of seminars or you hear a lot of great information. It's really consistent self-discipline in applying what we know. Would you guys agree? And in yes, terms absolutely. of, yeah, in terms of applying consistency, Think about whether, I mean, would this Zoom office work if it was once in a while or once a year? No, it doesn't work no. that way. Because it, it works because it's here every single weekday and we can depend on it. And that's why we come. And that's why we get 40 plus people all the time because it's consistently here. Um, I already mentioned that consistency builds trust builds relationships, and it's small actions daily that always beat um, 
bursts of activity. Like Robert was just saying, if you do 50 contacts in a day, great. But if we don't see you again, then that's not gonna help. It's better if you do 10 contacts every day. Okay, so um, we know all those things. So I'm just gonna share my personal experience of 10 things I feel that I consistently do. And of course I'm not perfect, but I try to do these things consistently. So in no particular order, number one is I talk to people every day. So whether it's on the phone or at the doors, whether it's lead follow-up, so calling hot leads or talking to new people or calling my database or calling other agents or um, even if I'm previewing property and that agent is there, like the listing agent is there, I want to talk to people because I'm going to learn something from everybody I talk to. And talking to people is obviously our business. Oh, and something else about our business. I think the reason why consistency is so important in the real estate business is it's a complex sale. So it's not like selling other things like cars. Um, you know, that's a pretty quick thing to sell most things, but with houses, it's such a big purchase for people. It's such a big sale for people that the consistency is what they're going to notice about us. If they see our um, email blasts, our newsletters go out every two weeks or every month, they're going to want to hire that agent. Would you agree? As opposed to the one they haven't heard from for three years, they don't know if you're in the business or if you've moved. But if you're consistently sending out material on a regular basis, that builds trust. Okay, second thing that I do is I consistently, fairly consistently get back to people in a timely fashion. So if people call me, I wanna call them back as soon as I can or email them back, text people back and people seem to really like that. Number three, I attend a mastermind group of like-minded people consistently. So I have a mastermind group I've been in for over five years. We meet every Friday and I attend and I participate uh, regularly. So I really like consistently doing that. Um, number four, I pretty consistently say yes to things. Now, I hear sometimes that it's good to say no to things and successful people say no to a lot of things. I find for some reason I tend to say yes to things. So when Robert called me up to do this talk, I was kind of busy and overwhelmed, but I said, sure, let's do it. And I figure my mindset with these saying yes to things is if I don't like it, I just will say no next time. But I want to consistently say yes to things so that I'm um, not just trying to stay in my comfort zone. Uh, number five, I like to meet new people. I consistently like to meet new people and especially people that are doing more business than I am or are more successful than I am. Uh, recently, I went to Seattle and met with an MFO agent that has only been in the business for about five or six years. And she's selling homes that are multi million dollars. So I asked if I could meet with her and uh, have a coffee and, and hear what she does. And one of the things I learned that she does is she, do, she previews a lot of property at the higher price points. So I like to meet new people. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Nancy. You broke yeah. up there a little bit. <laughs> what, 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 what was that last line? She previews <laughs> a lot of property. Oh, okay. So got it, got sometimes it. I need to hear what I need to do consistently from somebody else. So I meet new people, and guess what? The tried and true things work. That's what makes people money. And she probably doesn't preview property once in a while. She does it all the time. Number six, 
this uh, goes back to that story I was telling you in the beginning. I like to do the things I say I'm going to do, even if some something transpires that may cause me not to want to do it. So one thing that I'm doing fairly consistently these days in this market is price reductions. So if something is getting very few showings and no offers, I have to talk to them about a price reduction pretty early in the process. Within 10 to 14 days of being listed, I have to plant the idea. I have to let them know that this is the mar what the market is telling us and we're doing everything to market your property at this price point and we're exhausting all the buyers at this price point. So that's not a fun conversation. That's not as fun as saying we got 20 offers and we're getting you 100,000 above asking price like we did six months or nine months ago or a year ago. That's not as fun, but I'm not being paid to have fun. I'm being paid to have the difficult conversations. So I wanna be consistent even if I'm uncomfortable and even if it's hard. Um, number seven, do we need a break? <laughs> or can I keep going? Keep going. We'll we'll okay. save questions for the end. Okay, great, great. I feel like I'm talking. So um it's because like you're naturally expressive, Nancy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I like to wake up early consistently. And I got this from Neil. Listen to motivational YouTubes. So we all have negative thoughts. I do. I wake up and sometimes I'm, I have a list of the problems I need to solve today or this week. So uh, Neil told me a long time ago, just go onto YouTube, get something positive and just pour it in. So he used this motion, just pour it into your brain. So there's tons of great stuff on YouTube. Lately, I've been listening to Jim Rohn and it's so old school and old timey, but so fantastic. And it's so motivational. And he basically shares that it's not the market, it's not the company, it's not your situation, it's not your family, it's you that you need to change. <laughs> and once you change, things will change. But it's not your family that's got to change. It's not your company that's got to change. It's not the economy that's got to change. And it's not the interest rates that got to change. It's not the buyers that won't listen to you or the sellers that won't listen to you. We have to change if we're going to improve the situation. So I love that stuff. It, it makes me feel empowered. It makes me um, not you know, wander over to CNN or the news where, you know, what's that going to do? So waking up early and listening to motivational YouTubes. Number eight, I like to look for better, for more ways to improve and be better. So over the last two years during the pandemic and afterwards, I've been um, collecting a lot of bad habits, such as drinking Diet Coke, drinking Frappuccinos, you know, just be unhealthy eating habits, unhealthy um, wine drinking habits. So I'm looking for ways to improve and be better. So recently I hired a wellness coach to help me work out more and be more focused on healthy eating and uh, cutting out junk. So I'm always looking for ways to improve. And also that takes consistency because it's painful initially. Number nine, uh, when I talk to people, I like to be like Neil and Mike Ferry, um, very curious. I want to know what they're doing. I have a little story about this. So before I was selling real estate, I used to sell wine. And I was in the wine business and I was in my early 40s at the time. And there was another sales rep in the company, small company. She was only 24. So she was half my age. 
And she was doing twice as much business as I was. And that kind of made me mad because I like to do a lot of business. And I had to put my ego aside and ask her, what are you doing that is causing you to be so successful? And she told me. And I was able to implement some of the things that she was doing. And it's fantastic. So I do that now. I like to talk to people who are doing more business than I am. Um, Melinda will know because I'm always bothering her and asking, hey, can I sit down with you for 15 minutes? I'm having trouble in this area. And people who are doing well, generally, I would say 99% of people would love to talk to you and help you out in the area that you're looking to improve in. Like, look at all the fantastic people that um, we've heard on the show that share about what they're doing. So that's something I like to do. And number 10, I like to work every day. Even though I have coaches that tell me you need to take a day off. Um, how many people here have kids? Okay, do you get a day off from your kids? No, you got to feed them every day. You got to remind them to brush their teeth and put them to bed and make sure they take a bath before they go to bed, maybe. So my business is like my kid. I like to work every day and I check my email. If, I'm, if it's my birthday or something, I'm not going to work as much, but I tend to work every day and I've talked to some other people in other industries that have a successful business. And I do think they check their email in the morning and in the evening, even on vacation. So that's something I do fairly consistently. I hope my share was helpful. Do you guys have any questions? So first of all, before we open it up for questions, the you mentioned that most people that are high producers don't mind sharing and that's exactly what we're getting today is having someone like nancy doesn't mind sharing her successes and what what works and the truth that is a lot of truth to that you know Na well let me ask you this because i asked this to melinda and jack last week when we did the objection handling class nancy are you concerned about anyone taking these ideas and stealing your business that's, um, hmm, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, she's not, she's not concerned yeah. about that. Melinda, not concerned about it. Jack's not concerned about it. Any of these types of things. So, so very good. How people uh, do steal some ideas because I always take other people's ideas and yeah, it's, it's fantastic. There's so much business out there and the more we can do our industry better and at a higher level, I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Good. Okay. So let's open it up to questions here. I, I've got a, a bunch, but you know, I'm going to, I'll take a step back. So Nancy, a question came in the chat box. What does your morning routine look like? So I get up at 530 in the morning, generally. And I will listen to some motivational YouTubes and I'll do some stretches. And actually something that I was consistent on that I haven't been and I should get back on is <laughs> writing out my 10 gratitudes and 10 goals. So that's something I need to personally get back to doing. And I generally check my emails because I do want to respond to some things that have come in after 7 p.m. And I want to do that kind of thing before the golden hours, the prospecting time or the sales time, which is kind of eight to five or eight to four. So I want to respond to emails. I do have a role play group that I belong to that starts at 730 and goes till eight. And that's really nice because then I can start prospecting at eight. I'm warmed up. There you go. Got it. Got it. What is your prospecting order? Oh, prospecting order. Mm, I don't have a specific order 
but I do call my database and I do call hot leads. And then I will call some just listed, just sold, and then less so expireds and FISBOs. I may call some of those at the end. So you're not trying to rush to call expireds at 4.30 in the morning so you can be first? Well. Because <laughs> that, that's, that's where we're going, Nancy, is everyone's rushing to be first. It was, you could call at 7 and then, well, I'm going to call at 6.30 and then someone's going to start calling at 6 and then pretty soon it's going to be 4.30 in the morning going, wake up. So, so that's not Nancy Dupre's schedule. You're not worried about that? Not so much because we live in a big metropolitan area where there's a million agents calling random FISBOs, I find. Yeah. And for me, the most effective FISBO or FISBO and expired calls are when I've just sold in their neighborhood. So they know that I'm not an agent from Riverside or the Valley calling a Long Beach, you know, person who doesn't really know their area, but they specialize in FISBOs everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's funny. Yeah. So Nancy, I had a question and maybe you remember this or not. We, when you asked the 24 year old what they were doing that was causing them to have so much business, do you remember what they were doing that was different than what you were doing? It was a long time ago. I think she had a lot of um, energy and enthusiasm. And I don't remember a lot of what she said, but one thing stuck with me. It was kind of funny, I think. She said um, one of the prospects said to her as an objection, well, you're probably just going to get me to buy a bunch of wine because you're, re you're really pretty. <laughs> and she said, no, I'm actually quite disgusting, but the wines are really fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so I think she used humor and she was able to get kind of a dialogue going with people and then book that appointment and get in front of people and then show the wines. Got it. Got it. So, got it, got it. you know, she was maybe a little bit more expressive than I was and not so analytical. So that was kind of a good idea to just you know banter with people and get in front of and and try to get the appointment good 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 okay yeah. so humor energy things yeah. like that good all right other questions for nancy otherwise i'll just keep talking because i have more okay i'll keep talking nancy, I have more. sorry I <laughs> go ahead i couldn't get to my switch fast enough sorry um let me ask a question here, Nance. What, it, what, what keeps you consistent? Because, you know, I, I have a lot of people I coach at your level. And, um, but going out and talking to people makes you happy. There's something intrinsically interesting about that um you don't love it but you don't hate it and you figured out in your head that the formula for you to make money is to talk to more people yes right that that's your your formula um we talk about it for years but you somehow have internalized it and figured out that Talking to people equals making money for you. Yeah. So where does that come from? Did you listen to a lot of seminars and videos or did it, did you read it someplace or did you instinctively know that? I heard, I heard about it or read about it in various books. For example, Grant Cardone said mm -hmm. one time, he said, are you, are you exposing yourself to new money? And, you know, I think it was an audio book. So he was reading his own book and he said, are you getting into situations where there's new money? And what do I mean by new money? What I mean is new people. 
because that's the source of money is talking to people. So if you're not seeing any new money in your business or your life, you're not meeting enough new people. And that kind of stuck with me. And then when I watch you or Mike Ferry do those interviews, it's so like, you know, I really want to know the curiosity. And I'm kind of, you know, a, a sort of analytical uh, driver-ish person. So I wasn't really a people person. Like my background is I used to be in healthcare and I took science in university. So that wasn't a people subject. But when I went into the wine business and I realized that I could actually sell, even though I wasn't a cheerleader in high school or something, <laughs> that actually, if I just talked to people, they would, they would be interested in talking with me. And it was a great experience. So the more I did it, the more rewarding it became. And it was all... It was almost like I'm going out of my comfort zone and I discovered it's okay. It's almost like if you have a fear of heights and then you do something that's high and you go, it's okay. It's actually fine up here. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Thank you. And I guess I would follow up on that is you really don't have a fear of meeting new people. You're not shy about it. No, I'm not shy about meeting new people. I invite people to lunch. I invite people to coffee. Like when I was in the Central Coast in, uh, what is it, San Luis Obispo, I asked, um, oh, what's his name? Hal Swayze. Hal Swayze, if he was available to meet for drinks, and he did. And so I met him. Um, yeah, I've met various people that are, are people I've seen on stages and it's fantastic. I mean, people have 30 minutes or an hour and likewise, when people ask me to do coffee or, or talk to them about whatever, I, I really want to return that as well and, and say yes, instead of I'm too busy for this, you know? Right. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh -huh. Great. Robert, did, did you have uh, any other questions? I have more questions, but oh, question. uh, yeah, but I'm, let other people do this. Go ahead. Um, okay. So my question is, has there ever been a time or as a daily thing that you get either some type of distraction or an obstacle what do you do to come back to that consistent um, or staying consistent on, on something? But I guess, I don't know if I'm phrasing it right, but uh, it's more of like, sometimes we have a schedule or things, but things, things come up. How do you adjust? Yeah. You... Yes. So that happens to me all the time and I get overwhelmed and then I get upset that I didn't finish the things that I wanted to do. And then I go to bed and then I wake up and it's a new day to do everything that I wanted to do. So every day is a new day. And, and I, I try to just go back to what I wanted to get done and it feels so good. So I don't know if that answers the question, but yes, I have distractions. I have negative things happen to me. And I have things that frustrate me, but like, what kind of negative things are you talking about? A deal no, no. falling. So basically, you, what you're trying to say is you you reset the neck for the next day to whatever you couldn't make or get done. Then you just reset for the next day and get yes get things done. Yes, or it could time. be the same day. Like for example, because I have a schedule of things that I have to do, then just getting back to the schedule will reset things. So Nancy. So that, let's say a D. Mm -hmm. No, I was going to say that brings up a question on this. So do you actually have it written down on a yellow pad? And when you complete it, it gets checked off. 
Is it in your calendar as a things to do? I do this at nine, I do this at 10, I do this at 11. How does that lay out for you? Eddie, would that help you understand this maybe a little bit? Yes, like if you have a to-do list, but I know something. sometimes things come up and you can't get it done and it, it, you, how do you reset to get things done? So yes, um, having a, maybe a to-do list, but yeah. Yeah, I have a schedule and usually there's more things that I want to get done than I can do, but I prioritize the important things. So I know I want to get these things done today. And that's all that may be all the time I have, but those are priorities and I need to get those done. And uh, I don't want to let negative things take over the day. For example, if a deal falls apart, it falls apart, you know. I don't want to try to negotiate it for three hours to try to get it back on track. I want to uh, look at damage control, like backup offers or what else we could do. And I want to get things done quickly, like just sign the thing and, uh, and, and move on so that we can, we can get to the next item on the checklist that we need to get done. Hey, Nancy. <clears throat> Are yes. those the most common obstacles Nancy. you get uh, or distractions? Like uh, something from a deal that you have to kind of work on it and you have to leave things behind? Yeah, for example. Yeah, there's lots of distractions <laughs> in life, right? Yes, yeah, So definitely. there's a lot of, yeah. So any kind of distraction, as long as we prioritize our business and try to get things done quickly, then, then that's my goal. Hey, Nancy, the, the, yes. the question, uh, this is Michael. Uh, the question is, like I said, you got a goal, let's say to make 30 contacts in a day and you have, like you said, this negative, maybe an escrow falling apart or a challenge or something. Let's say that you need to handle it, and I know that sometimes affect you psychological because what's going on. It's still, but at the end of the day, do you still complete the thirty contacts, or that day maybe you got affected and you said because of this, maybe you did twenty. I don't know. Is that happening? Yes. yes, all the time. So yes, I may have a contact goal and I don't reach it, but I want to look at the contacts I did make and go, hey, I got to highlight the contacts that I did make out of those. Who is really a great lead or appointment? And I'm going to focus on that. Let's say I wanted to make 30 contacts today, but I only made 10 or 15 or 12. One of those 12 is going to be a hot lead. Would you agree? Like when you're prospecting? Yes, correct. So I'm going to focus on that. Yeah, I'm going to focus on that and call that a hot somebody. And I'm going to follow up on them and keep calling them, maybe call them again in the evening at five or six o'clock. And uh, they might need some nurturing or something to get to the finish line, but provide them what they're looking for. Right. So, yes. So I'm going to focus on what I did accomplish, not what I didn't accomplish. Because we did accomplish something, right? I mean, we... No. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. The important thing is you're not going to give up what your priorities are because you got a deal falling apart and then you say, I'm not going to make any more calls or anything. The day is already wasted. You don't just let the go waste, right? No, no, it's never wasted because you did some things and you can always do another 30 minutes of lead follow-up in the evening if you feel kind of like, man, my day was wasted. You know, instead of ending the day with that mindset, you could just call your hot somebodies and connect with them or just call some database people that you know are going to give you a great feeling that might give you a referral. 
That is such a great mentality to have. Uh, don't focus on what you didn't accomplish. Focus on what you did accomplish. Uh, that That is really, really powerful because, you know, sometimes, look, we want to get 30 contacts, 40 contacts, but Nancy, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes you can get a good lead or an appointment in 10, right? Yes. You know, and... And I, I got to tell you, from a coaching standpoint, I hear this all the time is, well, I couldn't prospect three hours because I had to do something. So I didn't prospect this morning. This is really important when it comes to consistency. Every little bit counts. Every little bit counts. Well, Robert, I can't prospect from nine to 12 because I, I just can't move this inspection. The inspection is at 1030. Well, why can't you prospect from nine to 10? You know what I mean? Like at, that's one hour, that's 10 contacts. Now extrapolate that over the course of a year, 10 contacts, oh, one hour, and you'd work for 220 days, that's 2,000 contacts. Could you find a deal in 2,000 contacts? That's just one. Then that's that's what you're missing potentially if you just say, well, I can't do it this morning. So I, I thought that was that's a really great point, Nancy. Thank you. Yeah, and if you're going to the inspection, how long does an inspection take usually? Well, it depends on which agent you ask. Yeah. So what's the rate? <laughs> <laughs> the range is one hour to three hours, right? That right. we're at an inspection. So out of that, you could probably make 10 contacts. So while, you you're, can, at the, while you're at the inspection. You can either call people, like you can call, you could probably reach five people on the phone and then you can door knock around when the inspector is doing his job, you can door knock that block and say, hey, I just sold your neighbor's house. What are you guys thinking? When are you planning on moving? <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great. Make them so make so make the most out of your your time there. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's kind of like if the uh, who has those things that tell you how many steps you're making per day? Yeah. I do. So even walking to the photocopier and, and walking to Starbucks or so the small steps, if you can fit in a couple of contacts, they're worth it because sometimes you never know. They're like, oh, I lost your number. I was hoping you'd call. I'm ready to sell. That's great. Hey, Robert. Yeah. Yeah. What you're saying about, you know, to keep prospecting for an inspection, I really think for your mindset, it's better to prospect before because after the inspection and the insp an inspector come with all these problems, then you start prospecting and start thinking, oh my God, all the problems the property has, the buyer is going to cancel the seller. You don't want that in your mind. So you better do it before so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good point. That does affect people as well. Good, good stuff. Well, it's one o'clock, Nancy. This has been awesome. Just fantastic. I, I, I wrote down all these notes and I got to tell you, I am going to steal some of this. I'll make sure you get credit, but I'm going to steal some. I could make a whole class on Nancy Dupre's top 10 things on being consistent with because I wrote a bunch of little notes next to each one. So this is this has been fantastic. So everybody, please unmute yourselves. Give this this wonderful woman the round of applause that she deserves for being here today. This is fantastic. All right. Good job. Love it. Love it. Congratulations, Nance. So, Nancy, I'm curious. Were you nervous at all doing this? I had some stress in trying to put it together to make it valuable for you guys. <laughs> okay. Good. Good <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. You did fantastic. You did fantastic. Great work, Nancy. These Thank are all you. really great points. You know what I would challenge everybody to do? This is what I wrote down here because she went through 10 things that she's consistent with. I would what I would challenge everybody to do is go through these 10 things and give yourself a score of one through 10 on each of these 10 points to figure out. Yeah, you know what? I'm pretty consistent on that. Oh, you know what? I'm probably only a four on that one. You know, I'm only a three on that one. And you can start to identify maybe a couple things that you're not regularly consistent with that you might need to work on. Hey, Robert, can you put in the chat the 10 things? Like if we forgot one or two. Uh, I'll type it. I'll type it up because I wrote it out on a piece of paper. So I'll actually type it up and send it. 
it'll take me too long to type in the chat box. I'm I'm not the best typer. All right, good stuff. Nancy, you're the best. Thank you, 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 thank you. And then um, if I haven't said it enough, thank you.